Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Mark Steiner. Great having you with us. Now, Wisconsin is one of those states with a long-standing progressive tradition. It came roaring back in this last election with Democrat Tony Evers beating Scott Walker and the new AG is Democrat Josh Call. But through lots of gerrymandering and manipulations, the right wing still controls the legislature. They are pushing through legislation to diminish the power of the governor and to ensure that the new AG cannot fight for the money needed to ensure health care in that state. A firestorm has erupted, and we're joined by John Nichols, national affairs correspondent for The Nation, who is also a devoted Badger, lifelong Wisconsin person, born and bred there, and now joins us here at The Real News. And John, welcome. Good to have you with us. It's an honor to be with you, brother. So um, let's take it from the top. Let's hear this quick clip of the governor uh, talking about what the legislature is trying to do, uh, and we'll start there. This is the clip with Governor Davis. I am very concerned that the 2.6 million people that voted and, and they represent the rest of the people of Wisconsin uh, did not have their voices heard because of the actions of the, uh, of the legislature over the past few days. All issues are on the table, whether it's litigation or other issues. We are exploring anything to make sure that this legislation does not get into, uh, get into practice. So that was Tony Evers, the, the governor-to-be, mm -hmm. Democrat. So what, 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 what's the backstory here, John? What happened in, 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 and where, is the, where are the battle lines now? Sure. Uh, the way to understand this is that, as you suggested, Wisconsin is a historically progressive state. It also is a state that um, historically has been democratic in presidential politics, and while it was a battleground uh, at the state level between Republicans and Democrats, it was a state where there was a uh, basically a shared sense of values. And so politics played out. Uh, one side won, the other side lost. They passed power back and forth. What happened when Scott Walker was elected governor eight years ago is that Walker and his allies in the legislature decided to play by a different set of rules. They uh, restructured state government to make the governor dramatically more powerful. Uh, they also attacked labor unions, public services, public education, uh, with, in an effort uh, from a variety of different directions to lock in their political power uh, and to centralize it in themselves. And they thought they had wired things really well. Uh, Donald Trump narrowly carried the state in 2016, and Republican was elected to the U.S. Senate. Uh, Walker had been repeatedly reelected. They, they basically thought they had, they had changed the state. And then in 2018, uh, the voters didn't just elect Tony Evers as governor. They also elected Democrats to every statewide office and to, the, to a U.S. Senate seat. So now Democrat governor, lieutenant governor, attorney general, secretary of state, state treasurer, and uh, in the spring there was a state Supreme Court election, and the liberal won a seat that had previously been held by a conservative on the high court. And so you start to get the picture here. Uh, it's clear that the voters of the state have moved to a different place, that they are, in fact, uh, reasserting their progressive values, their progressive democratic leaning position and so the republicans uh, are desperate they're very very scared that all the work they had done to change the structures of the state to benefit them weren't sufficient so they have done something quite remarkable they took the lame duck session of the legislature which you know mark is usually used to clean up you know uh, whatever right. lingering bits and pieces are there, maybe dot right. and I cross the T. They've taken the lame duck session of the legislature to radically restructure the government of the state, to take a statewide constitutional office, that of attorney general, and essentially disempower it, make it a little more than an extension of the legislature. I mean, the attorney general will still exists, still have some responsibilities, but on big things like joining federal lawsuits and, you know, taking all sorts of key steps, they have to get permission from the legislature to do that. That's never happened before. They also did a number of steps to disempower the governor, take appointment powers away from the governor, uh, move uh, policy, structural things in a way that, that the governor doesn't have nearly as much power. And then finally, they locked in a whole bunch of executive orders that Scott Walker had done, making them law. And so uh, in the case of Tony Evers, he will become governor. A, with fewer powers than Scott Walker, but B, 
uh, with many of the things that he said as a candidate he would reverse, now taken out of his authority. So he had said as a candidate, I'm going to take us out of some of these federal lawsuits uh, against the Affordable Care Act, things like that, because that's not what the people of Wisconsin want. And now they've made it hard for him to do that. Probably, possibly impossible. Well, so he, he, and this, this is a very yeah. quick clip I want to play of, of the of the of Josh Call, who is going to be the new Attorney General of, uh, of Wisconsin. Then we'll come back and talk about what these mean, what and what uh, John Nichols was sure. just talking about. One of the central issues in the AG's race and in the governor's race was whether Wisconsin should withdraw from a lawsuit that's seeking to invalidate the Affordable Care Act, a suit which, if it's successful, would eliminate protections for people with a pre-existing condition and would eliminate the guarantee that young adults can remain in their parents' coverage until they turn 26. At no point in the election process did anybody say the legislature might change the process so that the new governor may not be able to direct the attorney general to withdraw from that lawsuit. Uh, but now the legislature has passed legislation that gives itself that power and takes it away from Governor-elect Evers. So, um, I mean, it's, it's almost incredulous, John, I mean, how they could actually yeah. do this. I mean, but what they're doing is not necessarily illegal, correct? Well, I mean, uh, it's complicated. It's not illegal because uh, you have uh, a term. And when you're elected governor, when you're elected to the legislature, your term uh, goes to that last day. So it, what is referred to as a lame duck, and we... Uh, people I think generally understand that concept of a lame duck session is that after an election in the United States, unlike Britain and other places, uh, we don't immediately transition power. We sort of clean things up, you know, arrange for an inauguration. In that period, those who were elected still have the power to do things. It's just that we have not historically in Wisconsin or frankly, any place else had a situation where someone use the lame duck period to rewrite the rules in a way not to disempower the governor or the attorney general. That's not what's happening here. In a way to invalidate the decision of the voters. The voters elected people to do certain things, and now they are changing the rules so that those who were elected couldn't do it. So two questions it's here. A, it's, I mean, does the governor and the newly, the newly elected people in the state, can, Democrats, yeah. do they have a strong legal case? Can this be fought in the courts? I've been reading things as saying the way the Wisconsin, Wisconsin Constitution is written makes it very difficult for them to win a case like this if they take it to the courts because of how it's written. I mean, so what, and you know this. You know I this. think that there's, I do know the state pretty well, and I can tell you that they might have some standing and they might have, uh, they're, this will be fought out in the courts, and there will be battles, and it is possible that they could uh, could prevail in, in a couple of areas. At, at the very least, the, the Constitution of Wisconsin has very, very clear separation of powers, well-defined within it, and these constitutional offices are supposed to have real authority, the Attorney General especially. And so they, that is within the realm of possibility, but here's where the problem comes in, and it is a huge problem. The state Supreme Court is elected, and it has a majority that is aligned currently with Governor Walker, including a number of people that he appointed to the court. And so uh, you don't have to be too cynical to worry that this Supreme Court is not necessarily going to take a bold stand in favor of separation of powers. So what, so and there's a lot of concern there. So yeah. when you look at the, at the what this means in terms of a continuing political struggle in a place like Wisconsin, where the majority of people have voted in statewide Democrats, the legislature through, through all kinds of gerrymandering and other reasons have has solid Republican control. Yeah. Uh, and and so how do you see this unfolding? I mean, we saw even though there was this huge a fight with teachers and others and union people in, in, in Wisconsin, they lost that battle because of that, in part because of that. So, so where do you yeah. see the struggle going? I mean, what, what do you, what do you on, foresee? Well, it's a great question, Mark. And, and the answer is it's an ongoing struggle. Now, here's the important thing to understand. Why are they doing all this desperate stuff? Why are they, you know, literally rewriting the rules, locking in laws at the last minute, you know, changing structures of the state? They're doing it because they lost. And they lost quite badly. And if you look at it in a narrow view, you can definitely say, well, this is A, horrible, that's, that's obvious, but B, it's also you know, re 
you know, kind of troublingly anti-democratic. There's much to complain about there. But then here's the other part of it. Um, in January, Tony Evers will become the governor. Josh Call will become the attorney general. Uh, they will have some potential legal recourse. They will also have uh, the powers of the governorship and the attorney general's office, which still do exist in many areas. And, and you're going to see a pushback. And they will be able possibly to undo some elements of this, but they also are going to have a moral high ground going into elections in 2020, uh, perhaps even special elections in the midground. That's the political response. And then there's another subtlety that comes into play here. In 2020, when the census is done, uh, there's going to be a redrawing of legislative districts. When that happens, uh, you'll have much more competitive seats across the state. That's a guarantee just because you have the divided power. It'll either be decided by the uh, compromise in the legislature or you'll end up uh, – a, a court-drawn map, and it, it will be drawn you know, ultimately, if need be, by, by federal judges. Um, and so there's the, the relatively short-term, not, not immediate, the relatively short-term prospect of very different politics. And then one final thing, Mark. Mm -hmm. The governor does have the power of the pen, uh, the, the budget. We have a very, very strong veto pen in Wisconsin. That has not been undone. And so in even the early stages of his term, Tony Evers is going to be able to say to these legislators, you know, look, we're in the midst of budget negotiations here. There are things that you want. Uh, we may have to restructure some of these things that you just did. And so it, it's a real political tightrope walk. There's going to be a pull back and forth. But I, I – it's easy to get very cynical about this and get deeply frustrated. The one thing I would emphasize is never lose sight of the fact that the Democrats won all of these statewide races. They clearly have the wind at their back, and that does provide some real openings to push back on this once they have power in January. Well, John, it's always a pleasure to talk with you because you bring this positive light as well as deep analysis. It's always great to have you on this program and with me at any time. John Nichols, the national affairs correspondent for The Nation, longtime Wisconsinite, born and bred there for generations. His family has resided in Wisconsin. Thank you for joining us, John. It's an honor to be with you, Mark. Good luck. Thank you. And I'm Mark Steiner here for The Real News Network. Thanks for joining us. Take care.